Recording in progress. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Nasta preshu babadreshu Nasta preshu babadreshu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati uttama shloke Bhagavati uttama shloke Bhakti bhavati naishtaki Bhakti bhavati naishtaki So you've been hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam. This, do you need Hindi translation? No, you're okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> so you've been hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam is a graduate study of the Bhagavad Gita. Right? If you when you you're studying also at the same time Bhagavad Gita, right? You're reading Bhagavad Gita and you're also reading Srimad Bhagavatam. How many of you have the Bhagavatam in your home? Any of you? One, two, three, yeah. You have the whole set? No. You have the first volume, first canto. Whole set. Whole set. Yes. Mataji. Whole set. Yeah, in English? English. Yeah. English? Huh? In Telugu. Oh. Mm. English. Yeah, Telugu people like very much Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam goes on where Bhagavad Gita stopped. The Bhagavad Gita stopped when Lord Krishna was saying to Arjuna, Sarva Dharmam Parigyachna Mamikam Sharanam Brada. Lord Krishna was telling Arjuna to surrender to me, right? Lord Krishna told Arjuna, just surrender to me, give up all kinds of dharmas which are materially motivated and just surrender to me. I will free you from all sinful reactions. Don't fear. Sometimes people become confused. They think, you know, Krishna came to establish Dharma, but he's telling people, he's telling uh, Arjuna, give up all the Dharma. But he, he's telling Arjuna, give up all the material Dharma and just simply take shelter of Krishna. This is the principle. Take full shelter of Krishna. And you'll see when we when you began reading Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam describes that uh, Dharma Projita Kaitava Traparamo Narmatsarana. The second verse of the first chapter describes to give up all the Kaitava Dharma. 
Give up all of the cheating religion. Now, cheating, cheating religion goes on in all the religions, in Hindu, in Christianity, in Islam, in Buddhism, everywhere. We make a show of religion, but the purpose is not really to please God, the, but the purpose is to please myself. I want to get something. So that is called Kaitava Dharma or the cheating religion. So Srimad Bhagavatam says, this Bhagavatam completely, it rejects all the cheating religions. So Bhagavatam is going on from where the Bhagavad Gita stopped. We encourage devotees, read the Bhagavad Gita first, get a good grasp on the Bhagavad Gita, and then it's much easier to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam began, the first chapter was called Questions by the Sages. And we hear how Sutta Goswami is in the Naimisharanya forest. Naimisharanya. Have you been there? You can go. Have you been to Naimisharanya? No? You don't know that? It's in UP. Not far from Ayodhya. And Naimisharanya, they say, very powerful place to do sacrifice. So just like people go to Tirupati to do, you know, get the children's head shaved or to do some kind of yagya or something like that. So many people will go to Naimisharanya to do the kind of, to do some kind of yagna, do some kind of special worship, special puja. It's, it's a holy place. It's, I, the, the, there's one, there's one very big well there in the Naimisharanya. They say, <laughs> they say that well, it's bottomless. <laughs> no, they cannot, and they cannot measure how deep it goes in this well. So 5,000 years ago, the sages <coughs> had all come to Naimisharanya to do yagya because they knew Kali Yuga is beginning. There are four ages, just like four seasons. We have four ages. We have the Satya Yuga, you have the Treta Yuga, Dwapara Kali Yuga. All right, so Satya Yuga is like the golden age. The golden, everybody's, everybody's Paramahams. Everyone's very pure and saintly. We have, and they're very pious and religious. And then Treta Yuga declines, declines quite a bit. And then Dwapari Yuga declines more. And every time it declines, then the duration of the life reduces. In the Satya Yuga, people lived one lakh, 100,000 years. And then Dwapara Yuga, Treta Yuga reduced to 90%. Only they live 1,000 years. Oh, Treta Yuga, 10,000. From 100,000 became 10,000. Then Dwapara Yuga, 1,000. And then Kali Yuga, how long we live? There, maximum, right? You want to live that long? It's a long time, isn't it? We think, oh, well, so long, 100 years. So there was one great yogi, Markandeya Rishi. He got a benediction. He could live through the night of Brahma. Brahma, the duration of this universe, depend, it's, that's the life of Brahma. Brahma lives 100 years. So at the end of each day of Brahma, there's a partial annihilation. There's a partial devastation. All the lower planets are destroyed. So this Markandeya, he had to live through the night of Brahma. And there was, it was terrible. <laughs> he said, 
you know, he, it's described, described in the Puranas, how much difficulty he went through, how much suffering. He was in the ocean of devastation. The, there was a great inundation, all the planets were flooded, and he was in that ocean. There was no food, there was no shelter. In this way, he was suffering. So to live a long time, <laughs> it's not the goal of life. The tree lives a long time. Some trees can be thousands of years old. How long did Shankaracharya stay in this world? Huh? 32. And Lord Chaitanya, how long did he stay in this world? Huh? Lord Chaitanya? Lord Ch 48. 48 years. 24 in family life with his mother in Nabadri, and Nabadri, then 24 years as sannyasi. So they, they didn't stay very long, 32 years, 48 years, but they did a lot. They did so much. So Srila Prabhupada says, what is the value of a long life like a tree? Is it better to have one moment of full consciousness than a long life like a tree. So in the Kali Yuga, we have short life. And Srila Vyasadev, he, well, it's the sages in Naimasharanya, the sages in Naimasharanya, they knew Kali Yuga is beginning. They'd all come to Naimasharanya from many different places. They'd come from all over to come to Naimasharanya just to do yagya because they knew the Kali Yuga is going to begin. And the Kali Yuga is not a pious, it's not very pious, it's not religious. The people are very irreligious. So Srila Vyasadev, he's writing the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it, in, in the Bhagavatam, it's Sutta Goswami is hearing the sages. And the leader of the sages is a, a person called Shona Karishi. So Shona Karishi, he's been around a long time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we're talking about the Srimad Bhagavatam and we're talking about the scene in Naimisharanya. How Shona Karishi is telling Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami is supposed to be the speaker. And Shonaka, he's the head of all the sages. He's the one to put the questions to Shonaka. Uh, to, to Sutta. Shonaka is putting questions to Sutta. Sutta Goswami, right? <coughs> Sutta Goswami had heard Bhagavatam from Shuka, Shukadev Goswami. Shukadev Goswami was the son of Vyas. Shukadev Goswami heard Bhagavatam from Vyas. And Vyas, he got instruction from Narada Muni. And Narada Muni, he heard Bhagavatam from Lord Krishna. So this way, Bhagavatam was delivered. Initially, Bhagavatam was only four verses. But Srila Vyasa Dev, he has expanded it, 18,000 verses. And if you go to higher play, if you go to Swargaloka, on Swargaloka, hundreds of thousands of verses. Bhagavatam becomes bigger. Because on Swark, people live a long time. They have a long life there. So, uh, it's the same Bhagavatam. The, the essence is the same, but just the, the length is adjusted. So here on this planet, Srila Vyasadev, he had given us this Srimad Bhagavatam. 
and he's spoken at it well he's he had it is it and he describes how these sages all came naimasharanya because kali yuga is going to begin kali yuga means the age of quarrels do you ever quarrel only some things right <laughs> Yes, this age of quarrel. Very easy for us to quarrel mm -hmm. and argue. I think we need some air, Mataji. It, yes. it, it, it's uh, become too dry. A little, not too much. I'm not 24, 24. 24, 26 is better. Huh? It's not an easy, it's a fan. Fan, fan, okay. Uh, so, Kali Yuga, age of quarrel. We, we quarrel about little things, insignificant. Little things we say make it, we make up, it's a molehill, but we make it a mountain. Becomes the big issue. So, we want to understand the symptoms of the Kali Yuga. If we're quarreling, that means we're being influenced by Kali. We let Kali come into our midst. The personality of Kali comes in. You don't want Kali to come into your home or into your life. Try to keep Kali out, right? Just like we devotees, we we are you know we're vegetarian. People want to eat meat, fish, and egg. Then go some other place. Don't come here, <laughs> right? We are vegetarian. If they come to our temple, I say, "Where's the chicken? Get out! <laughs> don't come here." This is we don't want Kali coming in. So Srila Vyasa did describe the symptoms of the age of Kali. Short life. We don't live a long time. Not like other ages. So because it's a short life, we have to have a very powerful <coughs> Hare, Hare Krishna. Because we have a short life, we have to have a very powerful process to help us to become are free from the, the influence of the Kali, the influence of all the Maya. We need to have a powerful process. And we've been given very powerful process. In the Kali Yuga, process is simply chanting the holy name. This is very powerful. Now, in every age there was chanting of the holy name. But in other ages there were other processes. Just like in the Golden Age, in the Satya Yuga, people lived a long time. So they would do meditation, right? They would do the Astanga Yoga like that and they could sit, they could sit for a long time. And they could control the breath and they would just, they would pass the time, no problem. Some Rare people can do that today. Just like if you go to Kumbha Mela. Did you go Kumbha Mela before? Yeah? Hmm? One time you went? Oh. So you also went? Yeah, Kumbha Mela. Uh, people come from the Himalayas. They know that, oh, Kumbha Mela, this is the time for Kumbha Mela. Once in 12 years. And they'll come down. And they'll come, the, but they will be hundreds of years old, but they just look like young men. You cannot tell. They won't announce, you know, nobody knows, but they will come. They will come because they're sitting in Himalayas in trance. And they know when every 12 years, now is the time again, Kumbha Mill. They'll go take their bath and then go back. In this way, can pass hundreds of years. 
But that's very rare. Very few people can do that. Satya Yuga, people were doing. There was one devotee, he's described in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, tells mm -hmm. about Kardama Muni. And Devahuti, right. Yes. Kardama Muni, his wife was Devahuti. Devahuti is the daughter of uh, Manu. Manu. Yeah, good. <clears throat> right. So Devahuti was married to Kardama Muni. And Kardama Muni, he had done Astanga Yoga 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. Before marriage, he did Astanga Yoga for 10,000 years. Then he got married. That's, that's a good preparation for married life, right? If you told your husband, you know, before you marry me, you have to do meditation. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Difficult for people nowadays. <laughs> but that was the system. Before the men would get married, they first must go and do tapasya. Prachetas, they went into the ocean, sat in the bottom of the ocean, and then come back, they got married. The sons of Daksha, 10,000 of them, and then one, they also, they went to do tapasya. They didn't come back. <laughs> they met Narayana <laughs> yeah. But the principle is, before married life, the first, even today, in countries like in Thailand, I was living, I spent time in Thailand. Uh, it's a Buddhist country. So it's, it's common in Thailand that young men, the family will send a young man to the monastery to become a monk. He should go to the monastery, become a monk. He will shave his head and put on the monk's dress and he'll live in the monastery. And, and he will stay there for a month or three months or six months. And after that, then he'll come out, they'll go home and then they'll get married. It's a preparation. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, you know, people practice brahmachari life first. First they practice brahmachari life, then comes Krihasta life. But ordinary people are not trained in this way. So they have a short life. We live a short time and we're not very lucky. When we look for a spiritual teacher, you want to be guided by someone, there are many cheaters. Srila Prabhupada used to say, you want to be cheated, you'll find a cheater. Mm -hmm. Find some, if you want to be God, you'll find somebody, oh yeah, I can make you God. Yeah. There's a, Prabhupada tells a story about this one king. This one king, he, he had a pundit in his court. So he told the court pundit, he said, he said, I want you to write a Mahabharat about me. <laughs> <laughs> so the pundit told the king, okay, he said, pay me the money. First of all, you give me money and I'll start writing it, you know. And so the king gave a lot of money to the pundit. And so after some time, the king asked the pundit, he said, what about the Mahabharat? He said, oh yeah, give me some more money. <laughs> yeah. So the pundit took a lot of money from the king. And then after some time, the king said, okay, what's happening with the Mahabharat? So the pundit said to the king, he said, uh, how, many, how many husbands does your wife have? And the king said, what? He said, how many husbands does your wife have? He said, I'm the only husband of my wife. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. How my wife have? He said, no, but he said, Mahabharat, he said, the whole theme is Draupadi, right? She has five husbands. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to write Mahabharat? You know, you have to have, <laughs> you have to have somebody like Draupadi and you have to, and she should have many husbands. So then the king said, okay, okay, don't write them up. 
In this way, the, the pundit got all the money from the king. So there, there's a lot of cheaters. There's people who are good at cheating. You want to be God? Oh, I can make you God. Just pay me the money, right? <laughs> people are very gullible, we would say. Easily cheated. What they want to believe. Oh. So, Kali Yuga, this is very common. People are unlucky. And they're lazy also. They don't try hard. You ask people, just like we ask people, chant Hare Krishna. Oh, it's so difficult. <laughs> oh, I have to say so many things. Oh, I have to chant so many times. Yeah, very difficult. For a lot of people, it's difficult. They can't do it. Why? Because they're lazy. People don't want to. You have to read the book. Oh, such a big book. <laughs> ah, how I can read such a big book. <laughs> this is very, these kind of things. We, people are lazy and unlucky, misguided. They don't get the proper teaching. And above all, everyone disturbed. Nobody has a peace of mind. Nobody can be peace. They're not able to control their mind. They take so many drugs, so many medicines. We see the pharmacy. It's the biggest business, biggest industry, pharmacy. Want to, you want a good job? Don't be a doctor. Just go in the pharmacy. Get into the pharmacy. They're the people who make the money. A doctor... I was with a lady who was a doctor. Well, her husband's a doctor. And she was telling, she said, any time her husband can be called. Said, Often in the night we'll get as many as four calls in one night. <laughs> To be a doctor, very difficult, very tiring job. You have to be on call all the every night. You don't know when people are going to call you. Because he was a neurologist. So she was telling me that when people, if people have a stroke or something, then they have to be treated immediately. You know? So he has to go immediately, in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> call. Very challenging these kind of jobs. And people don't have peace of mind. You can imagine in that job, how you could be peaceful. You always think, who's going to call tonight? What's going to happen tonight? You can't rest properly because you always think somebody will, they'll be calling me. And not only doctors, even if you're in software engineering also, you get these kind of things. Maybe you're a software engineer for some company in America, and you know the time scale is different and so they have a network breakdown and they contact you in the middle of the night you have to get up in the middle of the night you have to go online and no <laughs> if you work for intel they can call you anytime you cannot turn off your computer they give you the computer but you can't turn it off <laughs> <laughs> so people are very disturbed you can see people not they're not calm and peaceful so th these are all symptoms of the age of kali there are a lot of faults in the kali yuga but there's one good thing right the yeah. good the good thing is yeah there's a verse in it there's a verse in the srimad bhagavatam in the eleventh canto, it says, "Kaler dosha nide rajan asti he ko mahatguna kirtana deva Krishna shya mukta sanga." Simply by kirtan, you can get all perfection. Although Kali Yuga is an age of faults, doshas, right? So many faults, but there's one good thing that simply by kirtan you can get all perfection. 
So you're very lucky. We're going to have Kirtan Mela, right? Yes, exactly. In December. So you can all come for the Kirtan Mela. And just stay there all day from 9 in the morning to 9 at night. And just hear the Kirtan of the Holy Name. And this way you can become very purified. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us the Shikshastikam describing the power of the Holy Name that it cleanses the dirt from the heart or the mirror of the mind. That it's the life of all transcendental knowledge. Increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. Gives us a taste of the nectar for which we are always anxious. So the Srimad Bhagavatam was this discussed uh, it, it is described that this Srimad Bhagavatam this is the incarnation of Lord Krishna literary incarnation of Lord Krishna in the very first chapter the sages of Naimisharanya put questions to Sutta Goswam when the devotees come in the association of other senior devotees the business is questions and answers. It, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna <coughs> describes devotional service. Machita Madhita Prana Purayanta Parasparam Hadayanta Shamamityam Tushyantisha Ramantisha Right. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are surrendered unto me. And they derive great satisfaction and bliss by enlightening one another and conversing about me. Krishna, yes, me, Krishna. Krishna says me. Right. So that is the business of devotees. Just like you come together today, this morning, you're here. We've come together to discuss topics of Krishna. So similarly, the sages in Naimisharanya, they had gathered and they also wanted to hear. They wanted to know about the absolute truth. So they put questions to Sutta Goswami and they wanted to know one of the most in, uh, important and relevant questions was that now that Lord Krishna has departed from the world, where are the religious principles to be found? As long as Krishna was, as long as Lord Krishna was present on the planet, they could understand that Lord Krishna is the personification of all re religious principles. But now he's departed. You could imagine 5,000 years ago, you know, Lord Krishna was present, and then suddenly he's, he leaves the planet. So certainly the great sages and all the, all the devotees, they were very, you know, what will we do? What to do? What to have? I remember when Srila Prabhupada departed, I was on the, I was with the devotees and we were, we were so confused. What are we going to do? Prabhupada's left us. So long as Prabhupada was with us, we were always confident. Yeah. We'll go Prabhupada's here. We'll go to Prabhupada. We'll ask Prabhupada. We'll tell Prabhupada. He'll know what we should do. He'll know the answer. We always just took shelter of Prabhupada. But after Prabhupada left, then we were, we were really bewildered. We thought, what will we do now? What are we going to do? And it took us some time. And and even things started to go wrong. There were problems. And Srimad Bhagavatam describes that when the great Acharya departs from the world, then there, there will be inauspiciousness. There will be difficulty. And the dif difficulties came. But gradually we understood that we have to take shelter of Prabhupada's teachings. Just like Arjuna, he'd gone to Dwarka 
right? Srimad Bhagavatam mm -hmm. describes how Arjuna had gone to Dwarka and he hadn't come back for a long time. And Maharaj Yudhisthira was wondering, what's happened? Why has he not come back? And then Maharaj Yudhisthira observed many different inauspicious mm -hmm. omens, right? Inauspicious omens. Like the jackals were calling, crying in the daytime. Usually the jackals only cry at night, but the jackals were call, crawl, crying during the daytime. And they were moving around as well. And there were, it, it, it described, the, de the de deities looked like they'd been neglected. And they were about to leave. There were many different inauspicious omens. The sun and the moon were glaring effulgent. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was wondering what is going on? What is wrong? And then Arjuna came. And then Maharaj Yudhisthira is asking Arjuna, how is this and how is that? And how and then finally asked, and then what about Lord Krishna? And Arjuna then told, Lord Krishna had left the world. He departed from the world. And Arjuna had to take care of Krishna's wives. He was given the time, but he got a problem. He got challenged by some cowherd people. And usually Arjuna is Maharati. He can defeat 10,000 soldiers at any time. But after Lord Krishna departed, he was defeated by these just simple tribal people who were not even Kshatriyas. <coughs> so he'd lost his empowerment. But then he remembered that he has to take shelter of Krishna's instruction. So similarly, when Prabhupada departed, we also began to remember that we have to take shelter of Prabhupada's teaching. There's the Vani and there's the Vapu. The Vani is eternal, but the Vapu is not. When the Vapu is present, we value it. Of course, we want the physical presence, but more important is the Vani because the Vani is eternal. So the sages wanted to know, now that Krishna has left the world, where are the religious principles? And so the reply is given in the second chapter of the first chapter. Krishna Swadamo Pagate Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Jnana Dipisaha Dharma Jnana Dipisaha Kalo Nishtam Drisham Nesha Kalo Nishtam Drisham Nesha Puranato Drano Dritaha Puranato Drano Dritaha the Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun. It has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. And persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance will get light from this Purana. We say Krishna Surya Sam Maya Haya Andikar. Yahan Krishna Tanahi Mayaya Adi. Krishna is like the sun. Wherever the sun is, there's no darkness. So wherever Krishna is present, then there is no Maya. No Maya. Krishna Surya Sam Maya Aya Right? So Krishna is the sun. Maya is like darkness. We conquer the ignorance by knowledge, by knowledge of, by remembering Krishna, take shelter of Lord Krishna. So Srimad Bhagavatam is, Bhagavatam is all about Bhagavan. 
is helping us to take shelter of Lord Krishna by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Devahuti, we were speaking about Devahuti, how she was the wife of Kardama. Kardama had gone and left Devahuti. They had children, they had nine daughters and yes, one, one son, son who was the incarnation yes. of God. So husband had done his duty. The wife she had she had a one that you couldn't get a better son than did with Lord Kapila, right? You've got a son who's an incarnation of, and nine daughters and they all get married to great sages. So Devahuti was taken care of and she has her son, Lord Kapila, of Kardama left because he wanted to, he knew if, I, if he stays with his wife, then it's not so easy to progress because he practiced brahmacharya for 10,000 years and then he'd enjoyed family life. He enjoyed Gehasta life and they had a lot of sensual pleasure. But he understood he has to fulfill the goal of life. And the goal of life is to totally detach himself. So he left the home. And he thought, wife has a son, son will take care of the wife. So Devahuti, she's a bit, you know, the husband goes and she's left with just a son. It's okay, but, you know, she's, still bewildered what to do what should i do so kapila muni tells his mother you have to become attached to the sadhu the important thing is become attached to the sadhu she had been attached to her husband husband's gone now she has to become attached to the sadhu take shelter of the saintly person. Her husband was also saintly, but the husband left home. So she has to attach herself to another son, find the other son. And Lord Kapila tells his mother, what are the qualities of a sadhu? How to recognize sadhu? Oh, he has a big beard. Oh, very powerful eyes. <laughs> Is it? Oh, long hair. <laughs> red dress, red cloth, how to recognize the sadhu, what are the qualities, yes? Yeah, we have to be able to recognize the qualities of the sadhu that he not only has to teach, but he has to show by his own example. So Devahuti was given this kind of instruction by Lord Kapila. And he encouraged his mother to hear in the association of the devotees. Satam prasanga Tajoshanadya shapa vargavatmani Shradara tir bhaktir Ramishyati Starting in me. So the, the, these are the well-known slokas. Just, but the, the, the message is very important. Topics of Lord Krishna heard in the association of devotees. Very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. Right? When we hear, we want to hear. It should enter the heart. Not only enter the ear, but it should go to the heart. And when we do kirtan, we should chant from the heart. When you have kirtan mela, wonderful devotee is coming, Sachinandan Swami. 
is coming for the Kirtan Mela this year. Satchinandan Swami is from Germany. He's a, my god brother, disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He's a very wonderful Kirtanier. And he will often implore, he'll plead to the audience that please, devotees, chant from the heart. Yeah, from the heart. So Kapila Muni is saying the same thing to his mother, that topics of Lord Krishna are very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. You want it to go in the heart. And that way it will stay there. If it goes in the ear, it can go out the other ear. You know, we lose it. So you want to keep it. So you have to put it in the heart. Keep it in the heart. And that will keep us enriched in Krishna consciousness. That way we'll be able to remember Krishna. Very important for us to have this program of hearing regularly. Just like here in this... Dubai, you have Nityam Bhagavata Seva every day. Do you listen every morning? Yes. 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 Yeah. It's very good habit. Certainly, devotees, we need to hear regularly. Why? Because we forget. <laughs> if we don't hear, we'll forget. You know, we hear again. It's very difficult to remember. You have to hear it again and again and again. gradually, okay, <laughs> I'm not the body. One lady was asking, I, I can't give up, I, I still think I'm the body. <laughs> you have to hear repeatedly for a long time. Well, we think it's a long time, but, <laughs> but actually we've been conditioned, we're conditioned souls. We have been in this material world a very long time. Very long time we've been here in this world. We don't remember all the births, all the bodies we've taken. So our conditioning is very deep, very going back very far. So to get rid of that condition takes time. Right? Just like you have a, if you have a disease, if you get it treated quickly, then, <laughs> you know, then you, but if you don't get it treated, it gets worse and worse, then it takes longer to cure, right? Yes. So just look at our position. We are the conditioned souls and we have been in this material world so long. So, it's going to, t we need powerful medicine and we need to take it regularly. Regularly, we have to hear, we have to chant. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is meant for that, for us to hear and chant and to remember Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said, one sloka a day, is it your whole life you can finish, one lifetime. Finish Srimad Bhagavatam. Very nice way to pass the line. Now reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that program is going on. Many devotees uh, who study Srimad Bhagavatam in our temples every day. They read one verse, often more verses. But very important for us to hear regularly. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Just simply hearing itself is a pious activity. Punya Shravana Kirtana. You become pious simply by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Even people, you know, people would say, I can't understand, I don't understand. But just keep hearing. And the effect will take, it will take effect. As Srila Prabhupada said, he, I, he said in the beginning, I could not understand what my spiritual master was speaking. Some, some of the language, of course, some of the language is different, you know. 
when I came to Krishna consciousness, I was puzzled by some of the words which were used, you know, like unalloyed devotee. <laughs> you know, but I, I, you know, I had an engineering background, you know, so I was familiar with alloys, <laughs> but then unalloyed you know, and related to devotee, you know, so <laughs> very strange, you know. And sometimes people even they will ask, what is what does transcendental mean? <laughs> so th there are special and special lingo in, in this in Prabhupada's writing. Very special. So it does take some time to adjust. But you hear it regularly, gradually, gradually, it starts to make sense. As Lord Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita that he was taught Arjuna was saying very difficult to control the mind but Lord Krishna said yeah it's difficult but it's possible by practice and detachment you have to practice we have to practice hearing and Prabhupada was appreciated by his own spiritual teacher that when his spiritual teacher spoke he didn't go away and when he came for initiation then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadhi said, yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. So that that was that's a very important quality. Some people come to Srimad Bhagavatam to sleep. <laughs> Sometimes people say, I, I can't sleep. Prabhupada said, just come to Bhagavatam. <laughs> come to our classes. Sit there, no, sit there, no. Mm -hmm. I say, Oh, I had a good sleep. Thank you. So much. <laughs> and they say, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva. It's a go to sleep mantra. <laughs> <laughs> and when we say Sharera Abhijaja, that's the wake up mantra. <laughs> So we're trying to learn, trying to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. We want to understand the form of Krishna here. Prabhupada says simply by studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. Actually there. You keep reading the Srimad Bhagavatam and one day you will see Krishna there. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is the incarnation of Krishna and the first two cantos are the Pada Padma. Pada Padma, the lotus feet. And we should study the first two cantos first. You get a good grasp from the beginning. Study the Bhagavatam progressively. Sometimes people, are, they, they rush to get to the tenth canto. And they just want to hear Rasa Leela. This is not recommended. You want to understand all of Krishna's Leela. So the first two cantos will present more about Lord Krishna's uh, creative potency. How he creates the world. Shristi Tattva. The Shristi Tattva. We have to understand these things very carefully. We have to understand also Krishna's different incarnations, how he comes in many different forms and performs inconceivable feats. He has achintya shakti, inconceivable potency. Because if we don't understand these things in the beginning, then when we come to 10th canto and we hear about Krishna picking up Govardhan Hill, we'll think, how is it possible? When we hear about Krishna having 16,108 queens, how is it possible? You know, so many doubts will come. So we have to understand that Krishna does have inconceivable powers. He can perform amazing feats. Just if we don't appreciate that in the from the beginning, then in the tenth canto, when we hear 
about Krishna as a cowherd boy and all the things he's doing as a cowherd boy, then we will become bewildered. So it's important to appreciate how Lord Krishna has avatars like Varaha and Lord Varaha pick up the whole earth on his tusks and put it back into orbit. And Lord Krishna can come from a, a pillar in the form half man, half lion. Yes, all of these different forms. So the, oh, ma many different inconceivable pastimes take place. We, we should understand all of these things. And that way then when we come to hear about Lord Krishna, we won't think that he's an ordinary man. But people who don't understand Krishna's power, they're thinking, oh, he's eating, he's sleeping, he wakes up, I'm sleeping, I wake up, what's the difference? I eat, I sleep, he eats, he sleeps. Is there any difference between me and him? Yes, there is, right? Our eating is not like his eating. And our sleeping is not like his. He is always above the material energy. He is the controller. He is the supreme. We are controlled. So all of these things are very important to be understood. So that's why we study the Srimad Bhagavatam in this way. To understand how to gradually come to look on the face of Krishna, to see him face to face. In the beginning, we're seeing only the lotus feet, the padapadma. But gradually, you become qualified to go out, to look up. So the Srimad Bhagavatam brings us to this stage. Just simply by hearing, So Sutta Goswami is answering the questions of the Seti. That's a, the one place where the Srimad Bhagavatam is spoken, in Naimisharanya. But Sutta heard it from Shukadev. Shukadev was the speaker. Shukadev spoke to Parikshit. <laughs> So Shukadev was the speaker and he spoke to Parik he spoke to Maharaj Parikshit because Maharaj Parikshit had only seven days to live. So Sukadeva Goswami was speaking. And then Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages in Naimisharanya. The forest, mm -hmm. Naimisharanya. And after that, Srimad Bhagavatam is coming to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> anyway, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. He used to go to hear it from Gadarha. And Lord Chaitanya liked very much to hear about Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. He would hear again and again these pastimes. So the Srimad Bhagavatam has been around a long time. And now we have the Srimad Bhagavatam available for the whole world. Everyone who can have the interest to hear, to take the time to read or to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. We don't encourage, don't think you can do it all in seven days, right? <laughs> Maharaj Parikshit had seven days. Oh, well, I can also hear for six days. <laughs> and people will sit, they will have the Bhagavad Sapta. And they say, well, I heard Srimad Bhagavatam. No, I'm enlightened, you know. <laughs> it's not quite so easy. Maharaj Parikshit had seven days. He didn't eat. He didn't drink. He didn't sleep. He simply heard for seven days. 
non-stop. You know, we can't do that. We're not able to do that. But we have to hear, try to hear regularly. So, nasta prayeshva padreshu nityam. By regularly hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and rendering service to the pure devotee. All that is inauspicious in the heart of the candidate becomes eradicated almost to nil. Almost to nil. It means you still have to get association with a good devotee to take away that remaining contamination. So hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam regularly was described by Rupa Goswami. He mentioned five items, very powerful, five things, right? What do you have to, what are the five things? Sankirtan, yeah. living in the Holy Dham, Associating with devotees, worshipping the deity. Yeah. So he, Rupa Goswami gives an example. He said, don't hear Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, if you hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, you will lose your interest in economic development. <laughs> So he said, you better not hear Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> You'll be doomed. Don't look in Govinda. If you look at Govinda in relation to the deity, he says, don't look at Govinda, who's standing on the banks of the Yamuna in the threefold bending form, playing on his flute. If you look on the form of Govinda, you will lose your interest in family, society, and friends, so you better not look. <laughs> so he's warning us. When we actually hear Srimad Bhagavatam, then we will no longer be interested, or we'll no longer worry about economic development, sense gratification. We will simply want to hear and chant more. So this hearing and chanting, this is the real business of the devotees. So Prabhupada put those five items into our morning program. Every morning in the temple, in the Krishna conscious centers, every morning there will be Bhagavatam, deity worship, kirtan. And the temple is a holy place. It's a holy place because temple means Krishna is residing there. It's not my temple. It's Krishna's temple, right? Krishna is residing there. That's a holy place. Wherever the pure devotees are, that's a holy place. So we want to associate with Lord Krishna. We want to hear. We want to chant. These are the instructions we get from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the Bhagavatam becomes our daily newspaper. Prabhupada told the story about uh, the people they, they were telling them, you know, what is it like in hell? <laughs> The people were working in the mine. They were miners. And so this, the, this missionary had come and he was talking to them and he was telling them, he said, you know, you, you have to become religious and pious, otherwise you'll go to hell. So they said to him, what is it like in hell? And he said, oh, it's very dark. It's very dumb. There's a, well, every day we go in the mine Every day it's dark and dark. We see hell every day. We're not worried about, they're, not, they're going in the mine every day 
you know, why we should be worried about going to hell every day we're going to this dark damp place but then the, the mis missionary thought oh, it's a, there are no newspapers it's a, oh terrible no newspapers oh we don't want to go there so people are so much attached to reading newspaper every day they have to get their newspaper so the missionary was telling him, there's no newspapers in this hell. So they thought, oh, this sounds terrible. <laughs> so in Krishna consciousness, we have our Srimad Bhagavatam as our newspaper. We get the news from the spiritual world. Everything is there. All the information about the kingdom of God. Not that we don't want to hear about the this mundane world, this place. This is the hell. No good news coming from this world. But we want good news, it's all here in Srimad Bhagavatam. We just have to read. We just have to read regularly. So some devotees they have a program. They will They've calculated how many pages in the whole Bhagavatam and how many pages they have to read every day to finish the whole Bhagavatam in one year. <laughs> there's, there's this one devotee and do you know that devotee? Yeah. He calculated, they have to read 42 pages every day. 42 pages a day. And, and then one year finishes the whole Bhagavatam. The next year begin again. And in this way, he hears the whole Bhagavatam. You don't have to do it like that. Prabhupada said one sloka. You can read one sloka. You can finish in one lifetime. All right. Are there any questions? Yes, Maharaji. Yes, right. If we're maintaining material desires when we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, then we're not going to get the real benefit of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, well, yeah, the, the point, the thing is, you have to hear from a devotee. Association is very important. If we are keeping material desires, then it will be it will, it will be shown to the other devotee, and they will know that oh, you are keeping material desires. You have to let go, and they will pull your ear and say, "Let go!" <laughs> right? They will make you force you to give up your material attachments to get you free from these material desires. So long as you hold on, you cannot progress. Remember, but they give the example about the people in the boat going to the wedding. Yeah. They all got in the boat one night to go to the wedding, and the boatman was rowing all night, and they woke up in the morning. Same yeah, they <laughs> They're in the same place. And they said, oh, boatman, what were, you, what were you doing? You must have been sleeping. He said, no, I've been rowing all night. <laughs> and then they, they saw the boat was still tied to the side of the river. They hadn't picked up the anchor. So people do bhakti yoga. They do chanting. But at the same time, they're holding on to the material desires. So you have to let go. You have to give up all desires. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
Krishna Bhagavatam Kita, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Premanande. Thank you for giving me the time. Any online question? No, we'll end the meeting.